I hope everybody had a good week. I had to send my motor from my lathe to an electrical place, an uh, uh, electrical motor shop, I guess you'd call it. They were really nice people, and I told them I needed it back real quick. And they they did everything that they could. So I didn't get started on this project till about Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I decided to make a bandsaw bowl. It's uh, it's something new. I've never made one. I made a couple of pieces in pine. It you know didn't seem to be a problem. I didn't go all the way through with it. So I took this piece of maple, and I drew uh, what looks like uh, crop circles on it. Uh, at least that's the way it looks from about thirty thousand feet. And if you'll notice underneath it, I had put a a uh, couple of strips of, God, I forgot the word. It's a type of ma mahogany. Uh, it's called, uh, I think it's actually called Swantini. The man that I bought it from told me, and I forgot. But when I looked it up, this big leaf mahogany came up, and it vaguely sounded something like he said. I should have wrote it down. Um, but anyway, that was probably one of my first mistakes. The lamination that I did on this bowl was not the best. There's actually gaps, and really and truly, I've never laminated anything like this. I've never taken adhesive and put it down and put weights and pressure and things like that on it. And these, this. The, the pieces I only had about uh, two inch uh, two inch strips that I could work with that were somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, of about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch after I had got them milled down uh, which a cabinet shop helped me out with that so I was running around doing different things while while the motor was being checked out and worked on. So basically, I'm just cutting these circles, and we're going to wind up gluing them together and making a bowl. How hard can it be? Just cut some wood, glue it together, clean it up on the lathe, and you're done. Well, maybe not so quick. I think I got some of the parts right, but. Like I said, the lamination was the first mistake, and and as we see, we'll get into more stuff. But it was a learning thing, and one of the, I don't like the way that it turned out, but I wanted to show people that it's okay. I mean, you know, if it does, it, like in the beginning, it says, um, you know, achieves woodworks, and sometimes it doesn't. Well, guess what? This is one of those that it didn't work. And uh, maybe somebody can watch what I'm doing and possibly learn something and say, well, don't do it that way. I, I think the only thing was cutting it all up into small pieces. I think that that was part of where I went wrong doing the halves and all that. I did watch some videos where people would basically cut into the circle then glue that back and I think next time and I will revisit this and try it over again. This right here was the second mistake. I knew that it was going to be weak so I thought well I'll just put a screw in these two pieces and hold it together. That yeah, sounded good. This is a uh, Another big mistake. I wound up drilling this pilot hole, not pilot hole, but a countersunk so that the head of the screw would go down. But I also drilled the same thing on the piece that the screw is going into, which there was no wood there. And instead, let's see if you notice underneath. Hindsight's great, especially when you're looking at the video and you're editing it. Okay, so this is this is with everything glued together, and it's rough, but 
at this point I'm thinking, okay, we're happening. And I knew, well, when it started doing that, I knew it wasn't happening, but I guess I just didn't have the chuck tight enough because that's a glue block that I have on the end of it. And it didn't come off the block. It just came out of the chuck. Um, but I knew that it was going to be kind of rough. And this isn't too bad. And so I just started cleaning it up and leveling it up. And I knew that it was going to be weak at the base. So I figured I would simply turn this, turn the base, glue it together because it's a glued up thing and be done with it. The black marks that you see there are what the bandsaw did when it was at that angle and kind of burning the wood but it um, it kind of helped in visually seeing what you needed to clean up more of and that you needed to go a little bit down further using the uh, round nose hurricane that's a negative rate. And there is a, a link in the notes if you're interested in getting one of those. But it doesn't come in a negative rate. I just I cut that myself. So I'm starting to feel a little confident so I have my bowl gouge with the Irish grind and just spoiler alert nothing happens <laughs> it was doing some fine shaving and that's what I wanted And this is a new tool of mine. It's uh, from Savannah. And uh, I like it a lot. It's uh, the round carbide. It's a 12 millimeter. And it has the uh, flat bottom. So it, it the handle's so long it just feels real, you know, very much in control. The mahogany, by the way, is a kind of softwood or just fontaine or whatever it is, or the big leaf mahogany um, is really softwood. So when I hit it with that, it just you see the color of the chips just change. And I think uh, it cuts real easy, which also makes it a little bit, uh, yeah, I didn't have my mask on. I mean, my face shield. But, um, but then again, nobody ever makes a comment. So if you happen to see that, say, hey, you should have worn your mat, your face shield. I didn't have my mask on either, but it was hot. Now here's the close up on the inside. Uh, other than the gaps, which I'm fixing to glue up, other than you know, the project is looking like it's going to happen. And I very much may have gotten rid of a lot of uh, things that didn't work with the screws and all that. But I think I do show it on here. And I should have just abandoned that. I shouldn't have even tackled that much. Here again, this just kind of gets to show you if you don't know what you're doing, don't start off Crete. If you never built a house, don't go build a copy of the Taj Mahal. It's uh, it's you know it's not going it's not going to work.
But like I said, this this thing cuts real good, and it doesn't even have the negative rake on it. But not one time did it ever grab or got out of control or anything like that. So I like it. Okay, here we go. So the concept was, after I mixed up sawdust and put glue in it, screwed it in, and it, did, it didn't even begin to work. But this is what I planned on taking this piece and putting it on the bowl, since the bowl's ready, and everything's kind of coming together. And so, Starbond to the rescue, but there's some things that Starbond can't even fix. And it's not Starbond's fault, it's just you can't glue emptiness. So, I've started my sanding regiment, if you want to call it that. Started with 80 and then 1000, just seeing if anybody's listening. 80 and then uh, 180 and then 220 and 340 and then 400. And I'm opening up even more of the gaps with the sandpaper which I figured it would because some of the turning the scrapers and things like that actually can kind of put things in, in a gap or in a groove or something like that but and that was 80 still working with 80 for, for a pretty good while actually both inside and out I like maple. It seems to uh, work well. It's hard, but it but it it does. It is kind of easy to work with, and you can see the dust going straight in the motor. Hooray! Definitely going to do something about that. So this is the halfway mark. This is kind of like the seventh inning stretch. And we usually do a special thing on all my videos, which is not true. Actually, if you're out there, just stretch your arms, shrug your shoulders, keep watching. This is my first terrible bowl. And that's 120. I did have a pretty good bit of grit in the or or not grit but scratches from the sandpaper of the 80 in the mahogany it it definitely is soft and it showed then or it didn't show but it, i saw it at that point back to the halfway mark if you're still there please leave a comment saying that i survived the first half of the video Now we're using the black CA Starbond glue, which is a medium thick. I'm putting tape in because the gaps are that wide and uh, it would have dripped. It would have just, you know, filled up and dripped out. Um, 
that's what happens when you have a new end. One of the good things about Starbond, let me talk about that for a second, is you get a lot of different ends for each of these bottles. And the good news is if you don't use them, you just hang on to them. Your next bottle, you got more. And so it's really good that you have different caps. You have uh, several different types of little attachments that can get down in small crevices for the thin stuff and I'm extremely happy to be affiliated with them and I do have a link in the notes below <clears throat> which is right, right near the description of the video uh, there's a little triangle that points down if you click on that you can see all the tools that I use. You can see uh, a link where you can get 10% off of your star bond purchases by, by clicking that link and then buying something. I um, think I picked up 180 and I needed 80 to get that glue off. And that's saying it was 80. Just seeing a couple more places and spraying the accelerator on it. One of the nice things about the super glue or the CA glue that Starbond sells and a lot of other people is that it comes with an accelerator. So if you just put it on and let it sit, it will dry over. Uh, amount of time but with the accelerator once you spray that on it's almost like sprinkling baking soda on it it, it dries immediately maybe it's liquid baking soda I don't know we don't use it like that though and there's old Chester keeping me company Okay, so this is with the ball thrown together, and it's kind of glued, and it's kind of got coat hanger wire holding in it. Not really. This is what I kind of wanted it to look like, and I still think it could happen with possibly a uh, a decent sized wooden dial would probably be better but I'm still thinking that it, it's, it's been glued up a little bit that it's going to hold and so I thought well if I turn it around and simply use a little bit of pressure pushing on it which didn't work and then actually I don't even show it but I wound up oh, I didn't know I was putting it on like that this definitely doesn't work then I actually spin it around, glue it again, and spin it around and use that in to, to uh, just on this live center. That didn't work. So anyway, this is kind of the look that I was trying to go for, and it just isn't going to happen. So after this section, we're going to move on to what I wound up doing which was cutting another end piece and just attaching it to the base of it. And I re-sanded the base piece and uh, just cleaning it up, getting ready to put a finish on it, which is just a, a uh, clear total boat and using my rotisserie that I can put the resin on using three to one uh, thick set it is so foolproof so to speak and then using the uh, star bond of course that I talked about earlier but the total boat resin is I like it it works for me uh, it dries slow but I have slow drying 
stuff. So, but I don't really have a problem with bubbles or anything like that. Yeah, the clock's at about 10 after midnight. Please remember that God is good. Please keep watching. And leave a comment and subscribe, please.